we all need Canada's youth to succeed. We need youth to help design drones to put out forest fires and ensure artificial intelligence doesn't outsmart us all. We need youth to help cure the diseases we don't even know exist yet. We need new skills for a completely new job force. But we're not prepared. That's why RBC created Future Launch to empower Canadian youth for the jobs of tomorrow. Like people, businesses have their journey, their path, sometimes straight, but more often evolving, growing, and adapting. And like people, businesses' needs change, creating the need for knowledge in areas like accounting, consulting, and tax. Areas critical to your continued growth and success, all part of the journey, and all part of what we do together with you. So that when your business has arrived, it's ready to keep going. MNP, wherever business takes you. Welcome to Python's Pit. Welcome to Python's Pit, Victor. Thank you, thank you. Um, congratulations for getting this far in the competition. I'm particularly looking forward to your presentation. You've got a hockey stick, strawberries, and a set of teeth, so I'm fascinated <laughs> to see what you have. Exactly. Uh, you've got three minutes to do your presentation, so I wish you the very best of luck, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello, Pythons. Any idea what these three things have in common? This here are metals used in braces, fresh seasonal strawberries, and my very own hockey stick. All three of these objects cause brutal, painful, and oozing mouth sores. In the current market, there are very limited solutions to people suffering from oral damage until the invention of mouth meds. Mouth meds is for people suffering from mouth sores or abrasions. Now this can be teens with braces, little children who fall and cut their lip, and yes, even athletes. Market research also supports the fact that there is a strong demand for such a product. One in five people are suffering from a mouth sore right now. 75% of teens uh, wear braces for an average of three years. And taking all the market research and product costs into account, mouth meds will originally be priced for $15 for 10 units per package. Mouth meds is a circular unit the size of a penny and is very much like a treatment system for oral injuries. The simplest way to describe the chemistry is that mouth meds will be very similar to the Listerine Cool Med product but it will have three additional unique components, one of which is a waterproof adhesive, a proven numbing agent, as well as ingestible antibiotics so that it can speed healing and provide immediate pain relief. Mouth Meds is asking for $3,500 in order to purchase the original raw materials, which go hand in hand with the three components I talked about earlier. $100 will be spent on designing the logo and packaging, about $500 will be spent on sourcing our first manufacturer, and the rest will be spent on obtaining the, all the legal certifications in order to market this medical product. So taking everything into account, your investments in mouth meds will keep people happy, smiling, eating, playing, and living a healthy lifestyle pain-free. So Sarb, we've had a wonderful day so far today here at Python's Pit. Um, it's, uh, we've seen a lot of pitches, we'll yeah, talk yeah. about that in a second, but first, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I run a food company, I run a dairy. It's a family business which I took over about 12 years ago. We cater very much to a clean palate, a very natural product line. We do yogurts, yogurt beverages, milk, that type of stuff. And you, you've been doing that for how long? How many years? Oh, 12 years, going 12 on 12 years. years. Yeah, I mm. love it because it's like so multidimensional. You do everything from marketing to product development to distribution chains to cold storage chains. So it's very multidimensional. Awesome. So you've agreed to be a, uh, a yeah. Python here. So w what attracted you to being a Python? The energy. It's so nice. You know, sometimes you get inundated with the work that you're doing on a day to day basis that you don't see the energy of different people and their different ideas. So that gives you an exposure to what's happening out there, and what, you know, children and kids are developing. So it's nice to be a part of something and to help them too. also get confidence in what they're doing. So we saw seven pitches today. Yeah. 
Um, what, how did you find the experience? How did, how did you enjoy, enjoy doing the exercise Impressed. with the kids? Impressed. They, we had uh, high school kids from grade 9 all the way up to 12, and the level of um, information that they have, the level of expertise they had, the confidence that was coming out, it was very, very impressive to see. I don't think I was that good at that age <laughs> at all. <laughs> Well, you may not think so. I know I wasn't that good. That, <laughs> that's absolutely for sure. So we saw a lot of the kids today, um, a lot of really interesting presentations. What piece of advice would you give them as they started to think about an entrepreneurial career? Passion. You have to have the passion. If you have the passion with that idea, you can take it forward because there's a lot of long hours, a lot of hard work, a lot of convincing other people that you're on the right track. And with that, without that, you just don't have the energy to make it to the end point. So we, we, some, of the, some of the kids today, what, what areas do you think they need to improve? What, what were some of the things you thought they could work on to get a little bit better? Everybody was very, very different. I think some of them had to work a little bit more on having the confidence to pitch their ideas. Mm -hmm. Some of them had that confidence. Some of them had to work a little bit more on developing the back end of their idea, giving it more thought as to the finance side of it. So everybody had different strengths and weaknesses. So, and I think that when we go to the next round, um, it'll be nice to see how they've developed and progressed on that. So where, where does entrepreneurship then fit into our day-to-day -day life? We have a lot more of these kind of competitions. We're pushing a lot more kids and youth and adults into entrepreneurship. Where do you think entrepreneurship fits into the way we're all developing here? I think it's everywhere. Even if you're not running your own company, I think um, a lot of uh, organizations look for people who are go-getters, people who think outside of the box, people that can redevelop. We're, re -cha we're changing the way we do things so quickly that I think that's a skill set that you need to have, that you can adapt to what's happening. And entrepreneurship gives you that ability to say, okay, this is what's coming down the pipeline. How do I want to change my take on that? How do I want to change my viewpoint on everything? So I think that's a great skill to have, even if you're not going to start your own business. So how does Python's pit uh, fit into that kind of development? And maybe what other ideas might you have for the local community to support entrepreneurs? I think it's a great idea. I, um, I got to give credit to Python's Pit. They started something that's um, helping students develop uh, the confidence to pitch their ideas and also giving them the mentorship to go and try to think about all the aspects that they have to consider when they're doing a business. So I think it's an excellent, excellent idea. Great time to start, too, because at this point, everybody is a sponge. Everybody's yeah. you know looking for new information, and they're starting to develop the way they think and how they think and what they think about. Well, I, I had a great time today. I think you had a yeah, great time today. Thank you so much for being a Python, and thank you so much for being willing to do something and make a contribution to your community. It's a pleasure. So, thank you. Thanks. Um, so, you've heard a completely new pitch. Now we're into the healthcare field. So, uh, let's start with James with a question. Absolutely. I, I got to say, it was really well done, uh, really well you know, practiced and, and, and smooth. So good on you for a great presentation. And, Thank you. Uh, I'm just, I'm intrigued really. Uh, what, what inspired you to, to get into this kind of field? It's rather unique. So I was, I had braces for about three years and uh, really the only solution that dentists gave for the cuts in your mouth that you get from the wires on the side are something called wax. And wax is something that doesn't taste well and everybody I've talked to agrees. And it also doesn't really work. So then I thought, why, when we have band-aids, like bandages for our skin, why can't we do something similar for uh, products like air for cuts in your mouth? So that's how I decided to get in the field. Yeah. I had braces too, so I yeah. know what you're talking about, that wax, yeah, nasty thing. Disgusting. I wanted to ask, is this something that you're going to patent? Is there an idea that you're going to patent this? Yeah, so I have some personal finances set aside from my own part-time job that I'm going to patent. And using your funds, there are necessary legal documentations you need in order to market a medical device. Because mouth meds is classified as a medical device, it does need like certain approval from the Ministry of Health. That's the Canadian one. It's FDA in America. Okay. And so, yeah, that's what um, my funds and what I'm hoping I can use from your investment. Do you anticipate any sort of hurdles like with the FDA or the Health Canada with regards to the ingestible nature of this type of thing? I don't because I, they do exist obviously with ingestible pills and all of like Advil and what they use in Tylenol. So I don't think it will be difficult to find these ingestible antibiotics. A quick Google search brought me to an example available even at Walmart. It's called amoxicillin which is relatively cheap as well. And if only like <coughs> small milligram or small dosages, and that's all you need for uh, an effective relief what about period. What the uh, adhesive and the material uh, itself? So an what I was thinking for the adhesive from my own research, so you know, 
people who have dentures when you have to like stick it in your mouth. So if you use a very, very small amount of that very strong adhesive, an example is polygrip. So if you use a very small amount, it will stay on the affected area for the amount of time it needs to, for the antibiotic to actually heal the cut and for it to actually uh, do all the necessary work in order to speed healing. What, um, what plans do you have in terms of actually developing the product to a prototype? Is there, because um, I'm just thinking of some possible liabilities. I mean, if you brought something out, uh, I mean, if someone choked on it in their sleep or if it had mm -hmm. some sort of toxic effect with them, like what, what sort of people and, and expenses, just tell me about the development process mm -hmm. you're going to have to go through and, and if you've given that some thought in terms of cost, time frames, all that sort of thing. So mouth meds, as I said before, is a medical device, and medical devices are split into three classes based on the potential harm they could have or side effects. And because of the ingredients mouth meds is using, uh, it will be classed as a class one, so no clinical trial will be needed. And basically what, um, what we're hoping to do with the production process is to experiment while, once we get the a certain approval with the legal documentation so that we can actually market the product, that we uh, have an experimentation process with different sorts of antibiotics, different sorts of adhesives, in order to find the exact chemical formula. And the goal for the, by this summer is to get all these documentations as well as a prototype in place. When you're talking antibiotics and such, like, I need to get a prescription from my doctor usually to get an antibiotic. So mm -hmm. am I getting a prescription for this then? If, I, if the antibiotics for ingest, that are ingestible, if they are over-the-counter, then yes, mouth meds will be an over-the-counter prescripted drug. Okay. But if you can find, for example, amoxicillin, if it does work and it is not over-the-counter, like you can just buy it at your local pharmacy, then okay. it doesn't need to be, mouth meds doesn't have to be over-the-counter at that point. Right, because I mean, I'm seeing online, like there's always this concern mm -hmm. that we're taking too much antibiotics, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether I'm correct in this, if it's, if it's true or in such, but it, is there any concern around that side that, you know, over usage of this or, you know, if we're building up resilience to these antibiotics or, or such like that? So because of how small the unit's actually going to be and because of the small amounts of antibiotics actually going to be implemented into the product, I don't think like overdose will be much of an issue. Okay. There will obviously be recommended dosages as, like with any medical device. Same with Advil and Tylenol and et cetera. I was thinking maybe there could be an, an, a version of it without antibiotics mm -hmm. as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking. A lot of people yeah. may not want that. Mm -hmm. right? There could be versions that have stronger adhesives than others. There could be versions that have stronger antibiotics than others, depending on the severity of the mouth sore or abrasion. Yeah, because some people are just looking for the cover for where mm -hmm. it's abraged mm -hmm. so that uh, it can heal faster. Yeah. The one aspect of it, have you ever thought of something that's by, that de degrades in your mouth like over time? Something that just kind of like disintegrates? Melts. Uh, is this like sorry. a band-aid aspect to it that just kind of disintegrates? Skin disintegrates. <laughs> disintegrates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that Listerine. Like you have the Listerine powder, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so something like that. as long yeah. as it stays on the affected area for the amount of time the antibiotic needs to actually go to the affected area, as long if we can find a way to make it like disintegrate or yeah. melt in that time, then that would be perfect. Yes, yeah, because the are choking hazard ways. that you mentioned yeah. is something that yeah. I would be concerned about, especially with kids. Yeah. You know, the I size think it's of... it's an extremely important feature, yeah. 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 I was thinking too, from a competition standpoint, I did mm -hmm. some Google searching around on, on the idea, and I did find some YouTube videos of penny-sized sort of patches that didn't mm -hmm. have your wording and stuff, but there was, it's not the first time someone's tried to come up with a bandage to go inside of the mouth before. What, I think the patent part is going to be very key for, mm -hmm. for you, so I think, I mean, I just I'd suggest strongly that you try and go down that path first because I mean, okay. it, I mean cause if you have a patent and you've actually got something saleable, you know, maybe you, you could sell it to Johnson & Johnson or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Um, and just because if you come out with the product and it's not patented, it could easily be knocked off yeah, by yeah. other companies that have the resources and are already in the, the industry, right? So, but uh, yeah, not really a question, I guess more just a comment, but yeah. uh, no, I, I, I like the idea. I think it's great and you've done a lot of good work here. Thank you. Yeah. And have you worked with um, Dentist and yeah, and so I have a dentist right now that actually gave me this, and he really believes in the idea of mouth meds. His name's Dr. John Deli Simonovich. He owns a local dentistry in the uh, Oakville area, and basically what he said is because he believes in the idea so much, he's willing to donate his time and abundant expertise until the product is in the market, and then that's when he will. So it's like a, a nice little stepping stone, which I love. Yeah, I think you've got a great market at even dental offices and orthodontal mm -hmm. offices and, yeah. you know, in, in that regard. I mean, obviously, Amazon's great go-direct-to-consumer in that regard, mm -hmm. but, I mean, you've got great exposure 
uh, on that side, definitely. Yeah, there's a real gap because of, you know, people with braces don't have anywhere to turn, you know, even with a small little cut. So I feel like with a product like this, there's finally a solution, something they can turn to that's not too expensive or doesn't taste bad. Okay, sounds had some great questions. Uh, the idea that Clinton had in terms of uh, the patent for the product. Oh yeah. I think there's probably if you had a patent on a product like this, there's so many other uh, entities that would be interested in extending their product lines with that product. If you had the patent on it, you might you might have a real opportunity there. So, mm -hmm. great, great thinking and uh, congratulations. So, final comments from the Pythons. James, how about you? Uh, yeah, I mean. The only suggestion next time I'd say was to you know to chocolate dip those strawberries and share them with us. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, honestly, this is an impressive breakdown. You, you know, it's really well thought out. I think you've got definitely demand onto there. Um, you know, it's going to be fun. I think around the the medicine side, the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. You know, as a parent and such, that's the only kind of area that gives me concern. Um, but I think if you're addressing that and making multiple lines of the product, that uh, that could definitely address that. So, good on you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, and really uh, great presentation and the. Um, you know the the brochure that you provided and the and the work that went into that was pretty impressive. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with these guys. Excellent presentation and do focus on the patent because that's the most important aspect of for you right now. Yeah. Thanks very much. Nothing more to add to that. Uh, first time I've seen uh, teeth, strawberries, and hockey stick <laughs> together. So thanks for the Sounds great presentation. Oh. Yeah, nice. Well done. Thank you guys. Thank you. First, I think from my mentor, I learned a lot about uh, how to reword sentences and how to really make it appealing to the specific audience you want to target. And then I also learned, you know, I gained some experience for public speaking and I think I'm becoming more and more comfortable talking with other people and in front of cameras and whatnot. The Pythons, the way that they already knew a bit about my product and they already knew which questions to ask and they gave me some helpful advice while I was up there and I really appreciated that. Honestly, I think it went really well. I missed a couple points, but I then went into the Q&A and reiterated those points. So in the end, I really am happy with what I did.